On this episode of Doing the Most, we are releasing our recipe for Cinnamon Dream, a cream soda inspired session mead. Y'all know I love session meads, and what better time to put out a cinnamon cream hydromel than the winter, when it can be enjoyed as a sipper during cold weather. This mead is inspired by a gift from some generous folks on my Discord server. They sent me some sweet clover honey, which is a clover honey that tastes like warm spices, primarily cinnamon. Really delicious honey. I've made a traditional and some hydromels with it, including the first two out of four batches that I've made of this recipe. I wanted to lean into something that was really in the realm of a soda. And so cream soda kind of felt like the right choice. So this recipe includes some added cinnamon, two different kinds of cinnamon, both Ceylon and cassia. And it also includes vanilla. And you're going to hear a little bit later on our recommendations. I have been using ethyl vanillin, and I get that in the form of a Mexican vanilla extract, fake vanilla extract, but it's three times stronger than regular vanilla, so you can use less of it and it goes further. And you're not going to be necessarily wasting a really good complex vanilla on something like this where a lot of that complexity is going to get lost in the dilution. But if you want to use nice vanilla extract, I say go for it. I did one batch that way and it turned out great. This is a recipe where you're going to want to play with the acid and sweetness balance on this. Now I like this fairly sweet and fairly acidic, but you might want to dial the acidity back and the sweetness up or dial the sweetness down and the acidity up based on your palate preference. So I would recommend sweetening this to kind of where we recommend in this video, but you know, taste it along the way. And then when you're balancing the acid, maybe add half the acid and taste it and kind of add more if you need to, to get to where you like it. And understanding that the carbonation in the end product is going to add a little bit more of a perceived acidity to this drink. I like it with the amount of acid that we prescribe here, but I can definitely see how some folks would want to dial that back just a little bit. And we're using a different acid than you've ever seen us use here on Doing the Most. Usually we're using citric or malic or tartaric acid. Here we're using phosphoric acid. And yes, you can use phosphoric acid in brewing. It's not typically used this way, but phosphoric acid is the main acid that you'll find in a lot of popular sodas like Coca-Cola. Typically it's sold in a 10% solution, which means you have to do a little bit of head math when you're using this in brewing. I've done that math for you for my palate preference, but like I said, you might want to start with half of what I recommend and then adjust up from there. And now I don't want you to necessarily be under the impression either that this is a cinnamon forward drink. It can be, depending on how long you leave the cinnamon in there, but I like just that little touch of cinnamon. And it's that nice balance of warm spice cinnamon and kind of like fireball hot cinnamon that kind of works together in the background of the vanilla and the phosphoric acid to really complete out the flavor profile on this mead. If you want it to have more cinnamon flavor, you might consider using a cinnamon extract to add a little bit more or just leaving those cinnamon sticks in for longer or crushing those cinnamon sticks up and throwing them in so you're extracting it at a faster rate. Either way, the name for this one, Cinnamon Dream, is a little bit tongue in cheek because you're kind of dreaming of cinnamon as you drink this cream soda mead. This is a recipe that has taken me some time to perfect. I even tested it out at a homebrewer event in Edmond, Oklahoma a couple months ago, and people really enjoyed it. Didn't win, but people enjoyed drinking it. So now I'm ready to share it with you. Here's the ingredients list. The ingredients for this cream soda inspired mead are about 5.5 pounds of wildflower honey, water to 4.8 gallons, five grams of wine tannin, and EC1118 yeast. However, in this video, I'm using D47 because my house is very cold right now and it'll ferment well here. In secondary, we'll be adding six cinnamon sticks, five cassia and one Ceylon. And I recommend seven to 10 days, but you can go as long as one to two months, depending on your flavor preferences. Eight ounces of vanilla extract, 
but I'd recommend four ounces if you're using artificial vanilla extract because it's quite a bit stronger. 75 milliliters of phosphoric acid, 10% solution, and we'll be back sweetening to around 1.030 using two pounds of honey that have been bocheted for 15 minutes and one to two pounds of raw honey. We'll be carbonating to about three volumes of CO2 so it's nice and sparkling. As you can see a lot going on there and a lot of honey coming in there to back sweeten it up to kind of play off of that acid but also that sparkle but also give it that big rich soda pop kind of flavor. So we are saving some room in primary, so we have additional room in secondary to add all that honey in. And when we're done with this, it's gonna be just around five gallons, which is enough to fill up a keg. I wish I could recommend doing this as a bottle condition session mead, but the amount of erythritol that it would take for me to recommend it be sweet would be a lot. And I don't know that I necessarily trust that to give you the flavor profile you want. Now you could, back sweeten and carbonate with honey using a pasteurizing process where you put the honey in, use a plastic test bottle to test for carbonation, and then you pasteurize your batch using a sous vide immersion circulator or another kind of water bath. I also don't love recommending that because there are definitely safety concerns with doing it that way, including accidentally making a bottle bomb because one or two yeast might have survived the pasteurization process. But I know there are a lot of you out there who do that and do it successfully. So if you're comfortable with that process, I'd recommend maybe giving that a try if you don't have kegging equipment. We're gonna get started by mixing everything up and we're gonna mix up the honey, tannin, and water first. Our goal is to get this in the range of 1.040 and 1.045, somewhere in that range. And it'll depend on a few factors, but five and a half pounds to six pounds of honey should do the trick. The reason we're not mixing up a full five gallon batch is because we're gonna be adding significant amounts of honey in secondary, and we want it to land around five gallons in secondary. Next, we put all our water in and use our drill to mix everything up and get our hydrometer reading. And we're at about 1.043. We're gonna add D47 yeast here. Like I said in the ingredients list, you can use EC1118 for this. That's a pretty reliable and aggressive yeast, but my house is around 65 degrees right now. So it's a D47 season in my house. We're gonna seal that up and in 24 hours, we'll add our nutrient to it. We're gonna be putting in 10 grams of Fermade O after the 24 hour mark. That will be the only nutrient that we add. Fermentation takes about two weeks on this, and as you can see, it's just past 1.000, so it's time to get it stabilized and sweetened. I stabilized this with potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate, and then got our honey started bocheting for the half of our honey that will be bocheted before back sweetening. And I'm adding our phosphoric acid, the same acid that's in a lot of popular cola brands. And I'm using ethyl vanillin, which is an artificial vanilla, so I'm using about half of what I recommend if you're using real vanilla, because ethyl vanillin is quite a bit stronger than regular vanilla. Then in go our cinnamon sticks, and these just plunk right down in there. And I like them around the 10 days to two weeks mark in this recipe, but you know, you could leave them a month or two months if you want this to have quite a bit more cinnamon flavor. After a 15 minute boche, that honey is gonna go carefully and slowly right on in. You wanna pour it very slowly because you really want it to just kind of slowly mix with the mead and not all fall to the bottom and shock your carboy with hot honey. So a very, very delicate drizzle will do the trick. And then in goes our raw honey. And a quick little stir, stir, stir to combine, and we will let that clear. Weirdly, I have found that cinnamon seems to help this mead clear once you add the cinnamon sticks. So I can't explain it. I'd love to see your comments on why, but I don't add anything to this to get it cleared up. And by the time the cinnamon is infused, it should be relatively clear. So airlock goes back on. There's enough trapped gas in there that it'll off gas and create a nice CO2 cover on the inside for those couple of weeks while you wait for the cinnamon to infuse. After the cinnamon has infused properly, we transfer it to a keg and get it carbonated. Easy as that. Hey 
Here with me to taste this is Anna. I'm sure you remember Anna from the channel. You haven't been on as much lately. That's true. <laughs> Life's gotten a little busy <laughs> in the last couple years. So this is the new recipe, the Cinnamon Dream. Ooh, that's a good name. Thank you. I thought so. So we're going to taste it, and Anna's going to give us tasting notes, because Anna doesn't normally taste the meads, but in this instance, it is very much in the family of things she likes to drink, oh, okay. like cream soda, ginger ale, sure. those yeah. sorts of beverages. Bottoms up. True. Cheers. So what I will initially say is that it doesn't actually have a lot of flavor, as it like washes over your tongue, mm -hmm. that most of the flavor happens like in the aftertaste. Like there's a second round mm -hmm. of like the initial thing you get is kind of sweet, kind of fruity, and then you get a wave of what's mostly creamy and you don't really realize that it's cinnamony until you've been told that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's I described it earlier. The cinnamon is like a supporting cast member. And the vanilla and the acid and the mm -hmm. sparkle and the honey are all kind of the things that are in the forefront. There's a ton of honey to back yeah. sweeten too. It's four pounds of honey to back sweeten, where my normal is like a pound to a pound and a half. It's got like a middle note of something a little punchier that I, I don't know quite how to describe it. You really can't taste the alcohol at all, but that's where I would say you could theoretically taste the alcohol is like in between first taste and that aftertaste, but it's not hot. It's just tastes like alcohol. Tastes like mead. Yeah. Tastes like a session mead. Yeah. yeah. But that phosphoric acid also gives it a little bit of a punch. And it's mm -hmm. not like a malic acid where it's kind of apple and round or citric or tartaric mm -hmm. where it's kind of bright and fresh. It's it's definitely like a its own acid yeah. profile. Yeah. Billing this as a cream soda style session mead yeah. is the way to go. And I think that was kind of where I faltered at the homebrewing event in Edmond, as I was describing it as like a cinnamon session mead. But cinnamon really isn't the foremost no. character, and I think people were like, huh. But mm -hmm. if I said, that's a cream soda mead, mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh yeah, that's a cream mm -hmm. soda mead. Yeah, it's, it's really an interesting use of cinnamon, because like you said, generally when cinnamon or warm spices are in something, they are so overwhelming that they dominate the flavor. And a lot of times people really like that, mm -hmm. but this is this is not that at all. Like it's interesting to use cinnamon, like you said, in this supporting actor kind of way. Yeah, background character kind mm -hmm. of, yeah. Well, if you like this video, we have lots of mead making videos and other homebrewing content on the channel. And if you dig deep enough back, you'll find Anna doing things like making walnut butter and cheese and other oh, yeah. fun projects from the past. You can subscribe. You can you can hit super thanks. Did you know super thanks is a thing now? If they really like a video, they can hit super thanks and, and give us like a tip, essentially Ooh, directly cool. on the video. Yeah, you should do that. Definitely do that. I need to buy another bucket of honey soon. And until next time, happy brewing, happy holidays, happy winter solstice. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Comment bros and various artists, everything from me to rose. Big creation, fermentation, inebriation, doing the most.